In practice it, exercise 4.2 ripple, we were asked to write a method named ripple that accepts a string and a number of repetitions as a parameter, and then returns the string concatenated that many times. And then we are given an example on what that output would look like given our string and the number of repetitions. If our repetitions is zero or less, an empty string will be returned. So to start this off, we're gonna do our method. It's going to be a public static void, or I'm sorry, not void, but string, since it says right here we are returning a string. And then we have our name, which is REPL, and then we're going to take our parameters. Our first parameter is a string. It says right here, we are going to just call it word. And then we want to take a number of repetitions. We'll do this int n for number. Next, we're going to have our brackets to close our method, and now we can write inside of it. So since we have a number right here that we have to go to, we're going to use a for loop. We'll do for int a is equal to zero, a is less than n, and then we will have an a plus plus, that way we can eventually break out of our for loop. Before we do this, we are going to have to store our concatenated string into a new string, because we can't just rewrite it into here. So we're gonna take our word, and we are gonna concatenate it, but store it into the string that we're making right now. We'll call it string, and we'll just call it concatenate because we want to keep it somewhat similar to what we're doing. So once we have our string concatenate, we're going to have an equal sign and then just an empty string. So we'll have do two double quotes right here. And with these two double quotes, if we never make this for loop, so if our number of repetitions is zero or less, we're not going to be in this for loop because this is how it has to run. It has to run as long as our n is greater than z a. And if our a starts at zero, that means our n has to be greater than our zero for it to be in this for loop to actually add into our concatenated string. Otherwise, we are just going to return our concatenated string with nothing inside of it, which means it will be empty. So inside of here, we are going to have to continuously add into our string right here. To do this, we'll just do concatenate, and then we will set this equal to itself, but we're going to do a plus equals. That way it keeps adding to the previous sum. And then what we're adding into concatenate is our word. So what's happening is we have our string concatenate that's going to store our word concatenated n many times. We're going into this for loop, and every time this for loop runs, we are adding one iteration of this word into this new string without spaces so that it will look like this. That's why we have this plus equals, and then eventually we're just going to break out of our for loop and then return our concatenated. If it's zero or less, we're not even going to hit our for loop, and we'll just return the empty string that we have right here. We've passed all six tests, so this is the correct code for this problem.